morning everybody back to school girl sampler here we are school girl sampler I hope you guys are following um, Kathleen on her Facebook page there's lots of inspiration there and um, we are on blocks 47 and 48 Louisiana I don't know why that's Louisiana but we'll go with it and then log cabin which is such a traditional block and a great block for beginners uh, if you're teaching someone uh, how to uh, sew the log cabin is a really good block to start with or the nine patch either one of those is really good but the log cabin is a good bl block to start with because it really is important that the cutting and uh, your quarter inch be uh, fairly accurate because each one of these pieces has to fit in. Now I know that there are people out there that take the center of a log cabin and they'll just sew the center onto a long strip and then they'll cut you know after they get it sewn. But so many things can go wrong if you don't actually square that up and then if you sliver off a little piece of the of the starting block I mean you could get that askew ever so slightly and if you askew that ever so slightly ever every time because it has so many uh, different um, seams in it that really can get wonky and I just don't have success doing my log cabins that way. Uh, I have greater success if I cut the pieces out individual to their lengths. So this is, you know, that doesn't look like it's going to fit because of my, I haven't taken up my seam allowance here. But each piece is cut exactly the length it needs to be. In the instructions, it gives you those lengths those lengths you know how long they're supposed to be so of course me and my gadgetry you know how I love my gadgets well the people at um, Marty Michelle they make these log cabin rulers and when I saw them I thought to myself that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life who in the world needs a ruler to cut log cabin strips. You just cut the strips the width you want, you cut them the length you need, and away you go, right? Well, this takes all the math, and you know how we love math. I love math, but a lot of people don't like math. And this just takes the math right out of it, because what you can do is you can stack four different fabrics on top of each other, all cut the width you need them, and this one just so happens to be for a width that is one inch and a width that is one and a half. This is one inch width here, one and a half inch width there. Then here's another ruler that's one and a half. And then this one over here is two and a half. So if you most commonly work with one and a half and two and a half inch strips, this would be the one to go. Remember how I say, whenever you have leftover fabrics to cut them in strips or squares and put them in your drawers well when you get an excess of strips that's the best time to go to your strip drawer one and a half two and a half one inch whatever you've got and start cutting them down into uh, log cabins and it's a great way to use up your scraps see how every background is different and every log on the dark side is different. Same with Cappy. She did the same thing. Different. She just used darks on one side and lights on the other. And that is um, a fun way to use up your scraps. But if you're doing that and you've got to keep reading back and forth how many of this you need, how many of that you need, it can be quite frustrating. So what you do is Let's say you're going to have five rounds, okay? So you start here. Here's A, A, B, C, D, E, F. So here's F. So I know that's going to be my biggest round. So I start cutting and I cut a set of Fs. Now, uh, 
realize there's three other fabrics underneath me. So I'm going to have four different fabrics that are size F, which is my last rung. And then I'll move over and cut the next rung. And move over and cut the next rung and the next one. And I don't have to think. They're just right there for me. And there's my center one to begin with. So now I have, as I've used up this strip, because each time I cut, I'm going to move. Uh, as I've used up this strip, I get four different strips. And then four different strips. And in a matter of a few minutes, I've got tons of logs in all different sizes from all different fabrics cut to make a scrappy log cabin. And this is just a really, really fun way to make use of all those scraps. Now when I talk about my scrap basket for my Kim Deal, this is, I make a lot of Kim Deal quilts, and so I just throw my uh, scraps in in this bin and it was really organized until it fell over in my car this morning so but it's all and I made this whole block from this basket I didn't have to go to my fat quarters at all I just used everything that was in this basket I always start with the largest cut first so I found my largest piece of fabric Cut it into a one inch strip and then cut it the size I needed it by using the book to tell me what size I needed it. So that's a little hint and I've got another hint about the log cabin when we get to sewing it on. And then this, the color scheme that she did in the book, I just, that is the colors of my bathroom. That's what I decorate my bathroom. And so I might make a whole quilt with these, with the squares and these fabrics, because I just think that's really, really pretty. And I use directional fabric. You can see here my little wings are directional. I had to have them both going the same way. And then when I made the block, I just kept turning the block, and uh, it really turned out really fun, I think. And Cappy just used her pinks and uh, aquas for her background, so. And I was able to get three um, potato chip blocks done this week. You know, I've been cross-stitching a lot. I've been at my cross-stitch retreat. So I haven't really been doing a lot of potato chip blocks. But I'm going on a retreat Thursday for the Indiana State Quilt Guild. And it's a sewing retreat. So I definitely, I think I'll take my red, white, and blue ones with me. Because I've already got them all set up. So that'll be good. Let's go over to the sew machine and make us some schoolgirl sampler box. Okay, we're here at the sew machine. I've kind of laid my fabrics out the way I'm going to do them. The log cabin, like I said, has a lot of seams, and I thought about sewing it all. I thought about sewing part of it together, but no, I want you to see me sew the whole thing, so stay with me on that. And as I do that, I'm going to also uh, work on my Louisiana block, which is just basically the flying geese unit that we've made, you know, 250 times by now. <laughs> But I just love this. I love this block. Sometimes I've heard it called the windmill, but she calls it Louisiana, so that's what we're going to call it. So what we're going to start out with is, <clears throat> I'm going to start here with my log cabin block, and you just kind of look at the directions, and it says that you're going to start with a light here in the book. See how A is the middle block, B is the light side of the log cabin. So I'm going to Flip that light side over. Line that up. Not gonna, uh, not gonna pin because I don't have a seam. I have to match or anything. Oops, got to take my shoes off. Man, it looks like I could remember how to sew. Okay, now we're gonna start. And then I'm going to pick up over here, and so I'm going to kind of alternate so that I'm sewing them both at the same time. So kind of using them each as a, a leader and an ender. Move that over, Peter. It's in my way. Okay. So I'm going to cut this, my log cabin off. Cut 
my thread because I didn't have a leader and ender to begin with. It's going to be a lot of back and forth. So you kind of going around the world then, around that center unit, yes. on the log cabin, yes, sewing a piece, yes, sewing a piece. Sewing now a piece. there is another block Clockwise. called. Yes, you go. Well, is it? yeah, that's the way the clock goes. Yeah, clockwise. Cool. But I'm going to give you a little tip to learn how to uh, know which side what goes on. Uh, but uh, there is another block called the courthouse steps. Now, the courthouse steps is done exactly the same way, except for you, instead of working clockwise, you work from side to side. Nice. Okay? So I would go, I would sew something here. And then the next thing I would sew would be over here. But for a log cabin, it's going to be here. So I'm going to work around this way in rows instead of side to side, side to side. That would be a courthouse steps if I did side to side. Now, a fun little fact about the uh, log cabin is that it had quite a bit of significance. The red center signified the hearth of the home, the fireplace. Uh, and so the red, always if you saw the red center in a, in a log cabin, that represented the heart of the home. And a lot of times it was used for like uh, a wedding quilt or a new home. If you got a new home, somebody would uh, make a log cabin quilt with the red centers. If the centers were black, it was a mourning quilt. So if somebody in the family died they would make a quilt in memory of that person and use black centers. Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating. Yeah, very fascinating. So I'm going to look at my chart again, and I've sewed A. Now I'm going to sew C, which is actually this one. Okay. There's that one. C, and if my piece doesn't fit exactly, that means either I've cut something wrong or my quarter inch is not uh, accurate. So this is a great way to tell whether your quarter inch is accurate. And you know how important that is, that your quarter inch be accurate. So I'm going to just, again, I'm not going to pin. I can kind of feel that that's laying really flat. It's not going to flip up on me. And then here's my uh, flying geese unit for my other block. And I'm going to get another flying geese unit. So on my first wing, and I'm sewing from diagonal to diagonal. You know, I lay it down face, uh, right sides together. Have you ever heard that term? R, S, T. If you see that in a pattern, it means right sides together. WRT wrong R W S T wrong sides together. So that's what that would mean if you'd see that in a pattern. Most of the time we sew with right sides together. But each time you have to press. Now notice that I've sewed this piece to this piece, and now I'm sewing that piece on, and there was only one seam there that I went across. And it looks like every time you set it down, you're orientating it according to the picture in the book. I am. That's going to help so me. That way you that's going to help it. me keep in track. Uh huh. So now I'm going to go to piece D, which is over here on my dark side. And I'm going to sew the next piece on. See that? And see how good it fits? The colors are real pretty. Thank you. I just got them out of my scrap bag. Get there. And uh, I love the way that that works out. I can use fabric that would have other been, you know, put in the trash. And you know how frugal I am. Frugal McFrugalton. That might be the name on my tombstone. Frugal McFrugalton. Or she saved every last inch. Every inch. Every, every square inch. Every square inch. She has it. Okay, let's sew another one. And by sewing two at a time, you're making uh, good use of your thread, good use of your time. Kathy of 
Okay, so I've sewn on three rows, okay? And I kind of had to pay attention to my chart because I didn't want to start off wrong. But from now on, how do I know which side to sew on? It will always be the side with two seams. See how this side only has one seam and this side only has one seam? I like, I like that so much better yeah. because that's easier to keep track After of. After I put on three sides, I will always know the next one I have to put on is the one on the side with the two seams. That is a great, that's great super. tip. That's so super. I know it's going to have to be a dark because I've got two lights on. Now I've got two darks. I pick up from my dark side and I know that it has to be sewn on. That's worth the price of admission. Right there. Uh, I learned that a long time ago. I think my friend Tammy taught me that. At, at Log Cabin actually is her favorite block to make. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Tammy. She's feeling better. She had the COVID. The Did she get COVID. the Rona? She, she, I don't know which one she got, but she was sick for about three weeks. It was bad. Oh, dang. Yeah, it was bad. And I talked to her yesterday, and she's she's talking better. She's feeling better. She said she... Uh, didn't know how normal felt until it just hit her. Just like the virus hit her, getting over it just hit her one day. So that was good. So here I've sewn that one on. And it, it's just like magic that this works this way because now which side am I going to sew on? I don't have to look at my chart because this is one seam, that's one seam, there's two seams. I know I've got to go there and I know it has to be a light because I've done two uh, lights, two darks, now I'm ready for another light. So um, if you're making a scrappy log cabin, you just don't, I mean, once you've got all your little... Uh, logs made and they're the correct size you just go along and and you just start sewing them on and sometimes people make light sides dark sides or they just make them all scrappy they just they just make them scrappy 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 i use two different backgrounds on mine just to make it interesting um i know that uh, here in the book, she used all different ones, and then she used pinks on one side and browns on the other. That's really pretty. You know, you can have organized scrappy. That's what we call organized scrappy. Now, I have uh, all four of those made. I'm going to go ahead and start sewing on my other wing on my flying geese. Now, we've been watching the Virginian at our house. Do you know about those westerns, the Virginian? No. You like horses. You should I love westerns, but I don't know about the Virginian. Oh, my goodness. you got to tell me about it. The first, the first season had 209 episodes, and they're like an hour and a half long. They're like mini movies. It's unbelievable. Wow. But they've all got a good, really good story, really intricate. It was good writing, and for the time, it was good action, and yeah, they're good. Horse, were there horses? Oh, tons of horses. They're horse breeders. The uh, oh, Virginian cool. works for a... A uh, guy who, well, he also does cattle, but yeah, horses every every episode, horses, definitely horses. So, and I'm just going to again keep sewing those rows on. So if you've been sewing your log cabins by just taking a big long piece and sewing the log cabin on a big long piece and you're not having a, a success with them being real square, they get kind of wonky, that would be the reason for the wonkiness. And I just, I don't know, I'm just not into wonk wonky when it comes to my quilt squares. Now, I like wonky friends. My friends need to be a little wonky because I'm a little wonky. But uh, for my quilt blocks, I want my quilt blocks to be straight, flat and straight. Mm -hmm. 
and I just you know keep cutting and pressing cutting at this point once you get it all cut out you know putting it together is a breeze especially if we uh, cut correctly so then there's one of my flying geese units now on this piece I didn't use any directional fabric you can see here that this background is directional and when I mean directional I mean there's a top and a bottom okay like this piece they're all scrambled around the design is just all scrambly helter skelter but this design has a pattern to it that goes up and down and so does this one it has a pattern that goes up and down so you got to pay attention to that uh, when you're making your blocks sometimes it makes a difference sometimes you just don't care but it's your quilt and you're in charge of it, so you can do it however you want. So here I go. Uh, where are my two seams? Right here. They're right here. So see, I didn't even have to think about it. So I know they're right there. Now it's getting big enough that I'm going to have to start pinning. Maybe. Let me, let me try this one. See how it feels. You don't know. Okay, right sides together. You know, sometimes when you're sewing with fabric, you like the back side better than the front side. Is there any law that says you can't use the back side of the fabric instead of the front side? No, there's not. Look at this fabric that I'm using. If I needed to solid that color, you know, here's the front. If I needed to solid that color, would I turn it over and use it? Well, yes, I would if I was home and I didn't have a... It was 4.30 in the morning and the quilt shop was closed. And I needed a solid, I'd turn that right over and I'd use it. No problemo. I'm sewing with this blue thread because uh, it was in my machine and my uh, my scrappy, it's a good medium color, so my scrappy is no problem with that. Just this gray-blue. It's a nice tone. It is. I usually sew with kind of an ecru-y thread, uh, a medium tone or a gray, but I'm going to be doing another uh, block this afternoon and it needs that color. So here I am, back to the two seams. Don't even have to look at the book, see? Because I already know that I have to sew it right on when those two seams. you said it's a beginner-friendly block, is that because there's nothing to match, on? There's nothing to match. There's just straight seams. There's no angles. It's a success story if they have it's a good way to learn your quarter inch and it, it it looks what I love about the log cabin is it looks very complicated and yet it's not it's not complicated at all it's just sewing logs uh, to one side and then the other so uh, when you're done it really looks like you know that you've had to especially on the corners it kind of looks like you've had to set in seams and I'll show you here and what, what I'm talking about in a minute <clears throat> I'm guessing when the block gets bigger the individual widths of the strips get wider no like if you go from uh, we're doing four four and a half inch if you do like six eight 10 or 12 inch blocks, do the strips get wider? No, not it's typically the they can. And if they do, your blocks, when you lay them out, they'll make circles and they'll do different things if you make the block, if you make the strips wider, if you're not consistent. Typically a log cabin, the logs are always the same width unless you're doing like, uh, there are techniques where you do make them different widths to make the design do a different uh, flow through the quilt. 
but typically a, a basic log cabin quilt, no. If I wanted to make this a 10 inch block, I just keep going around and I, okay. I wouldn't increase the, the log I gotcha. size I gotcha. uh -huh, unless I wanted to create something uh, abstract when I put them together. Hope that made sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my side with the two seams. I know I have to go back to my light. Hey, your pin cushion in the green dish. No, that wasn't log cabin because that had triangles, right? With the green headed pens. The pin dish that you used to keep by your sewing machine. What about it? No, not that one. The old one. Yeah. In the early videos. That wasn't yeah. log cabin, was it? Or was it? No, that was the pineapple. Ah, okay, pineapple. That was the pineapple. Mini pineapple. Now, the pineapple is very similar. You do it the same way, only you're doing them on an angle. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep, you're, yep. And then you cut the... Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. And there's a gadgety ruler for that, too. And you know, I've showed videos on that. That is so, that's a very fun way. Yeah, Dawn loves her some pineapple blocks. I do. That's a very fun way to, um, to use up scraps, definitely. All right. I don't think I need to keep sewing logs together. You kind of get the idea. You get the idea that you just uh, go from side around uh, like a clock. And then we uh, we uh, gave you the tip about sewing on the two sides. So I'm not going to continue to do that. That's just a, a time eater. So now I'm going to make these uh, little Louisiana blocks. And what it is, is it's your background, which is a C. And then these, and it's the same block four times. And then as you alternate them, it makes this pinwheel. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and sew these on. And I'm going to put my uh, seam allowances to the top. I'm going to put the, the plain block on the bottom. And that way I can see what that seam allowance is doing. And I don't have to pin. <clears throat> And they're just all for the same, which they don't look like. They look like you have to turn them yourself, but you don't when you when you turn them, when you make them all the same, and they turn when you sew them together. That makes it fun, don't you think? Mm-hmm. And this is a really good tip that when you're sewing, especially when you're sewing points, you can see where your needle's coming down on that point. And if you have to fudge it a hair or two or a thread or two, you can do that. So I'm going to put that log cabin block aside. I'll go ahead and press it. Then I'm going to press these. Now, you can press like she says in the book. I think she does say to press one to one side or the other. But I am a firm, firm believer that the, the block lays much flatter if you press seams open. There's just much less bulk when you press seams open. And... Somebody who doesn't press seams open have their reasons, and that's all good, too. Um, you know, my way is not the law. It's not, it's the law for me, but it's not the law for everybody. Now, I had my plans all made out for the retreat, what I was going to sew. I was going to finish that uh, block, that quilt that I started at the motor retreat. But Moda sent me a quote, and I got a deadline, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, sew on my quilt at all or not. It just depends upon how fast I can get that other one sewn. But this is a marathon sew-a-thon. I mean, this is, you get to sew from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. The, the Moda mail? Is a sew-a-thon? This, no, this next retreat that I'm going on for the, the uh, retreat, field. The retreat you're going on is a 
you're sewing on the way to your breakfast, you're sewing during breakfast, and you're sewing all you're through sewing dinner. All all dinner? You're sewing into the midnight. You're sewing into the midnight hour? Yeah. You're sewing all through uh, Jimmy Fallon. Is he a late night show person? <laughs> I think he's a late night show person. Yeah, yeah. Is he a Jimmy yeah, Fallon? Is yeah, a late, late night? night. Okay. So, yeah, you're sewing all through a Jimmy Dang. Fallon. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as long as your eyes are open, you're sewing. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of laughing going on, too, you know. I'm laughing already. I'm and not I'm even there. And I'm thinking there's going to be some blue tape involved. No minions to be killed at this one, maybe. Okay. Now, this block is so striking. I, I might just make a whole quilt with this. I think it's just that green and charcoal that you love so much. I just love that green and that navy, navy, deep navy blue. Sorry, so, navy. Well, yeah. It's just, to me, I don't know. The, That's striking. Just yummy, yumminess. I'm doing a cross stitch in those colors right now, too. It's a great big giant sampler. Now here I've got a thread from that's come from somewhere and I just I can't get it out so I'm gonna have to cut that off. Just cut it out. Cut it out. Yeah, cut it out. I don't know where that came from. It got stuck in there somehow. So anyway, this is my um which one is this one? There's that one and there's that one. And look how they come together. Now you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I think I've messed up because look, those those points are clear up there. Well, that's where they're supposed to be because you've got your seam allowance. Are you going to pin? Yeah, better believe I'm going to pin. You knew the answer before you even asked me, Peter. I did. <clears throat> okay. I so, like asking questions yeah, I know the answer yeah. to. Yeah, you're like a lawyer. Okay, so here in the back you can see where my point comes to. I'm going to stick my pin right there where that point ends. And I'm going to look on the front because sometimes it can be askew even from the front to the back. And then I'm going to go from the front to the back here and I'm going to pin those together making sure that those come right together. Okay? And then I'm going to pin on this side. We've done this before but it never hurts to uh, review pin on this side and then before I take that pin out I'm going to pin the seam right next to it see that let me hold that so you can see that so this little bitty uh, block four and a half inches has three pins in it before I sew it but you'll see why You'll see why. I want it to be on point. On point. I want it to be pretty mess. Beauty mess. Chloe and I were just giggling and laughing today. Having such a good time. She wanted to come. But, you know, we don't let dogs work at the quilt shop. Okay. Look at that. That's what you want, buddy. That is, the work is worth it when you open this block up and your points in the middle are so pretty. Come together just like they're supposed to. See that? See how that looks so nice? And then when I sew this, it'll take up right to that point, and it'll look so pretty together. So what what do you think, Peter? Do you think this colorway or with the gray color? Gray. Yeah, I just really think that's, that's yummy. yummy, isn't it? And that gray is just going with everything. Everything, isn't it nice? I cannot believe how well that gray is going with everything. Yeah, super duper nice. And my eyes, when I first saw that fabric for the very first time, uh -huh. and 
I heard the word background. I think you said background. Yeah. Good background fabric. Background. It didn't register as a background in my head. Uh -huh. Like I thought, oh, well, that's not light enough. But boy, yeah. it sure is. Yeah. People always think they the have to use a cream out. or a beige or something like that for a background. No, you don't have to. It's funny. And it's such a neutral color that the colors, you get an honest hue out uh -huh. of those colors. Yeah. So much fun. You sure do. So I hope you've enjoyed these. Block 47 and 48. Uh, 47 is Louisiana and 48 is the log cabin. We're rocking and rolling right through this book. So keep up the good work, everybody. Share pictures on the ins uh, on the insiders group, right? Facebook insiders, always in stitches. And let us see what your box look like. I love it when everybody posts their pictures. So have a good week. I'll see you next Monday. Bye.